Hey everyone, welcome back to my porch. I'm so glad you could join me for our next devotional reading. This morning we're going to dive into our Morning Glories book. I just love this one. And today I got to be honest, this devotional reading really, really hit home. Our scripture is going to come from Luke chapter 10 verses 38 through 42 and it says this. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. You are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. And our devotion says this. How did I get into this? Elaine sighed as she contemplated her morning. Why am I the one who gets snared into doing so much? Have you ever heard yourself saying that? Many women are victims of a can't say no mentality. These women are not necessarily smarter, more dependable, or blessed with more spare time than the rest of us. And if they could bring themselves to admit it, they don't really want to always be saying yes. Then how did Ellen's situation develop? Generally, this type of person is quick to volunteer and has the ability to follow through with whatever she undertakes. It's gratifying for her to be recognized as being both willing and able. And gradually she finds herself swamped with things to do. Although it has been her own doing, she begins to feel resentful at other people's expectations. It could be nursery duty in church, for instance. One may initially enjoy this duty, but after a while may realize that along with the gratification is a sense of losing touch with other areas of church fellowship. How much better not to allow this situation to develop in the first place, but how to avoid or prevent it? Why would an otherwise well-balanced, sensible person have difficulty in saying, no, not this time, perhaps some other time? We all need to learn that at times, no is a very good word. But, I hear someone protest, I'm a Christian. Doesn't that mean I should always be willing to do my part? It's not for us to judge one another's dedication, but we do have the incomparable example in Mary and Martha. The Lord Jesus knew what the right priorities can do for us. While Martha was doing good things and being a hostess and caring for the household duties, Jesus saw beyond to a better thing that occupied Mary. And in order to spend time with the Lord, Mary had no doubt had to say no to Martha for a time. Sometimes we may need to say a firm no to ourselves. We can create our own bind by crowding our hours with things to do and places to go. When we feel we must say no, we may still need to learn to stick to it, not be talked into changing our minds. The first important step in learning to say no when appropriate is to remind ourselves that as children of God, we are valuable to Him and accountable to Him for how we spend our days. It's a biblical truth that we are not our own. In the matter of our use of time, I've learned that saying no to some things frees me to say yes to more essential things. I don't know about y'all, but this one really hit home with me today. My mother would tell me time and time again, I was always one of those kids that wanted to be involved in everything. And she would say, honey, you get to pick two, just two, that's all you get. And I've tried to remind myself of that as an adult, as I've been able to make up my own mind as to what I want to do, because I'm terrible at not being able to say no to things. And then just like our example in the devotional today of Ellen, crowding my schedule with too many things, and then 
being upset at myself for not having time for the truly essential things. So what's essential? Spending time with God is essential. Spending time in prayer, spending time reading his word, asking him for that knowledge and that wisdom to understand the scripture and how to apply it to our lives, and then teaching it to others, giving other people that example and being the example of ourself as being a person called to the Christian life and living that life out loud. So what does your schedule look like right now? I don't know about you, but God's kind of cleared out my calendar for a little while. And it looks like, according to everything we're being told, it's going to be a little while longer while my calendar's cleared out. This gives us an opportunity. This gives us a chance when we're being that Martha to just look at what's really important and be the Mary. Sit at Jesus' feet and to learn from him. So in this time, when God has allowed us the ability to sit down for a minute, to really take stock of what's important in our lives, maybe we should try listening to him a little bit more and not overcrowding our schedule quite so much. Whatever you decide to do, whatever your calendar ends up looking like, I pray that you're blessed. Remember that I love you, but more importantly, God loves you. Bye-bye.